everyone. We hope you are all doing well. We have a lot of questions to answer for today's video. First, we wanted to share this video from one of our subscribers. This is their cat, and his name is Toby. If you would like to send us a short video of your cat, feel free to email us and we will put it in our next Q&A video. Also, we are going to be getting a P.O. box soon, probably sometime in June or July, so you guys can send us mail if you want to. Um, Susie's birthday is actually in July. She will be turning one this July. Her birthday is July 15th. Also, we've been trying to add variety to our channel and we've been doing more unboxing videos where we unbox products from cat companies and show them. Some of you guys said that you wanted to see more videos like this and some of you said that they don't like those kind of videos and that we should stop doing them. If you don't like our videos, then don't watch them. It's pretty simple. And also, the bandanas and the bow ties that we put on our cats for the videos are made for cats. Our cats are not being tortured by wearing them. We only put them on our cats for a few minutes for the video um, or for pictures. We don't leave them on all day and our cats are supervised the entire time they wear them so they don't choke or anything like that. So there is nothing wrong with putting bandanas or bow ties on your cat. Before I get to the questions, I just wanted to say thank you guys for all of the nice comments you guys leave on our channel every day. We truly appreciate you guys. As our channel has grown, we've gotten more negative comments each day. I don't want to talk too much about negative comments because it's not worth my energy. The negative comments bother me more than they bother my husband, but Anyways, some people were saying that I was making too big of a deal out of the negative comments and I should just deal with it because it happens to everyone. I understand that rude people are everywhere. I just want to let everyone know that bullying others is never okay. Whether online or in person, people have committed suicide because of bullying. I am never going to be okay with people commenting rude things on our channel and telling us to go die. We would obviously never listen, but we do not tolerate bullies at all on our channel. Let's just all be kind and speak to each other respectfully. I can't control other people's behaviors, but I can control what type of comments will be allowed and posted on our cat's videos. So if you comment something rude, you will get blocked. Don't be surprised if you write a rude comment and we block you because you had it coming. Apparently some people are so obsessed with our channel that after I blocked them, they created another account just to comment the same thing again and again and again. Honestly, it just makes you look bad when you comment crap about others. So just don't do it. Okay, with all that being said, Let's get to the questions. So the first question is, is Molly a long-haired cat? Yes, Molly has long hair. There's usually two easy ways to tell if your cat is long-haired. First, you look at the bottom of their paws and if there's like a little bit of fur sticking out of the pads, that's usually means that the cat is long-haired. Um, Molly has fur sticking out of the bottom of her paws and Susie does not. Another way to tell is by looking at the fur in their ears. If they have like a lot of fur sticking out of their ears, that usually means they're a long-haired cat. You can see Molly's ears have lots of fur that stick out of them, whereas Susie has very little fur that sticks out of them because she's a short-haired cat. Okay, next question. How do you manage all of the fur in your house? Three things brushing, vacuuming, and lint rollers. 
I used to vacuum our entire house every single day, but now I vacuum it at least once a week. We use lint rollers on our clothes pretty much every day to get the fur off of them. And we brush our cats often, usually several times a week. Also, I know that I made a video um, on our channel when Annie and Molly were younger and I said that Annie sheds the most. But since I made that video, all of our cats have shed a fair amount. Right now, Molly is actually shedding the most. Annie and Molly shed a lot and Susie sheds a decent amount. When do you think is the right time to get a cat fixed? This is a great question, and there's a lot of different opinions on this topic. Molly's breeder recommended that we wait until Molly was at least six months old before we got her spayed. So I would recommend getting your cat fixed at six months old because that's what Molly's breeder told us. I think that the earliest most vets will fix your cat is four months old but I'm not 100% sure on that. We would have gotten Annie and Molly spayed at six months, but we weren't able to find an affordable vet at the time because we're new to our area. We waited and asked around and eventually found a great deal for both of them. So they both got spayed together when they were a little over a year old. Susie has not been spayed yet, but we plan to do that very soon. We haven't noticed Susie display any signs of being in heat yet, and she is now 10 months old. If you're getting a female cat, I would try to get her spayed before she goes into heat because cats in heat are very annoying and hard to live with because they yowl loudly. It's also more expensive to get your cat spayed when they're in heat. Okay, next question. Do the cats get along well with the gecko? So as some of you guys know, we got a leopard gecko and we have a video on our channel of when we got him. He stays in another room with the door closed away from our cats. We don't want them to hurt him or freak him out. We're not sure if we will ever let them interact with him for his safety. Geckos drop their tails when they feel threatened and we don't want him to do that. It will grow back, but we don't want to stress him out in that way, so they haven't touched him or anything like that since we brought him home for his own safety. Um, we won't put his life in danger for the sake of getting views because people want to see them meet, but we will probably do a few more videos of him in the future because people have been asking about him. He does like to keep to himself and be alone, and he's a very easy pet to care for. Okay, next question. What are the best pieces of advice to someone adopting a cat for the first time? Great question. I answered a question very similar to this in one of our recent Q&A videos. We have a playlist of all of our Q&A videos on our channel if you want to look through them. I'm no expert by any means, but I'll share a few pieces of advice of what I would say to someone adopting a cat for the first time. So first, do your research and know what you're getting into so that you can be prepared to care for your new cat for its entire life. This includes feeding your cat every day, cleaning the litter box every day, spending quality time with your cat every day, and being able to afford vet visits. My second piece of advice would be to buy everything that you need before you get your new cat. Buy things like food and toys and a carrier and a cat tree so that you can be prepared before you bring your new cat home and so that you don't have to be stressed about buying everything when they are home. Okay, my third piece of advice is to get your new cat used to things as young as you can. Socialize them. This is so important. If you don't start getting your new cat used to things like baths, car rides in their carrier, nail trimming, and more, it's all just gonna be so much harder the older they get. So get them used to as much as you can, as early as you can, and make it a positive experience for them. Okay, my fourth piece of advice is show your new cat as much love as you can. Pet them every single day. Kiss them, hold them, hug them. We did this with all of our cats when we first brought them home, and we still do it, and we do it as much as we can, and it really makes a difference when your cat knows that it's loved by you and also they will show you love in return and it will be very rewarding. Okay, my fifth piece of advice is 
Teach your cat the word no as soon as you can so that they know what they can and can't touch in your house. You don't want your cat to eat your food or chew things such as cords. <clears throat> and teaching them the word no is a great thing for your cat to learn. To do this, yell no loud enough to make them stop what they're doing. And if they don't listen to you, you can like blow air in their face. Our cats hate when we do that. Also, if you want to make them stop chewing your cords, you can buy lemon spray. Cats hate the smell and taste of citrus, and they won't chew your cords if you spray them. You don't have to spray them forever, just till your cat gets the idea. Um, also, never hit your cat because that's wrong and you just don't want them to fear you. Okay, my sixth piece of advice is to get another cat if you can. Cats are independent creatures, but that doesn't mean that they like to be alone all the time. Our cats love being with each other and with us. If you get another cat, they will wear each other out when they play, which makes it easier for you, and they will also just have each other when you're not home. And my last piece of advice is to just be patient. Getting a new cat or a new pet can be stressful as it's a big change. Things won't always go the way you thought or planned and there will be accidents. When we first brought Annie home, she didn't even know what a litter box was and it took her a few days to figure it out because her previous home never taught her. Your cat might take a few days to get used to its new home. Just be patient with your new cat and show them as much love as you can. Okay, next question. Where do you buy your cat accessories from? We buy our cat accessories from a lot of different places. We shop online a lot. My favorite place to buy anything for our cats is Chewy.com. I talk about Chewy in a lot of their videos. I love Chewy because they have affordable prices, but their stuff is still good. Their shipping is fast and their customer service is awesome. I've never had a bad experience with them, so I continue using them and I highly recommend them to anyone who has pets. Okay, next question. Are your cats scared of thunder? No, they're not. We haven't had any really like crazy storms in the past year, so that might be why they're not scared of thunder. I don't know if it's normal for cats to be scared of thunder. Last year when we had only Annie and Molly, we had kind of a bad thunderstorm. There was like some loud thunder and Annie and Molly got a little bit scared. They didn't like run and hide, but they did have their eyes wide open and got a little scared. But we've had several thunderstorms this year already and all of our cats sat on the window each time and just watched the storms. They're very curious cats and they like to watch everything. Okay, next question. What is the personality of each of your cats? I love this question. So all of our cats are very sweet and loving. They're all affectionate with us and love to be pet and cuddle with us. They're all curious and they like to follow us everywhere in the house, even to the bathroom. All of our cats have their own personality. Um, so we'll start with Annie. Annie is very caring. She's also shy, loving, affectionate, sweet, and she loves to talk to my husband and I. Annie loves to purr. She purrs the most out of our cats. She loves to rub her body all over my husband and I and purr. She's not a loud cat. She usually just meows softly at us. If someone comes over to our house that she doesn't know, then she will not meow at all. She turns into a completely different cat and usually hides until they leave. Annie only acts like herself around my husband and I. Annie likes to play a lot. She would play all day with us. She has a lot of energy. She has the most energy out of our cats. She plays until she is out of breath. <laughs> if she is bored, then she will just meow at nothing until we give her attention. And because she has so much energy, she likes to destroy things. She has destroyed the most stuff in our house than our other cats. She has destroyed an entire roll of tissue paper and paper towels. She's also knocked dishes off the counter. We close our bathroom doors because of Annie. If we ever leave them open, she will go inside and shred the tissue paper. She just has a lot of energy. 
Annie hates going outside and she usually tries to climb me or my husband when we bring her outside. She much prefers being inside. I'm actually going to do a video really soon where I talk about Annie so you guys can get to know her better. Okay, now we'll talk about Molly. So Molly's personality. Molly is a very loving cat, just like Annie. Molly is the most gentle cat I know. She, uh, her personality is different from Annie's in that she's a very calm cat. Molly is a very low energy cat and she's always been like this ever since we brought her home. She prefers to watch more than she wants to play. She likes to play though and she does chase Annie and Susie but she also runs out of energy very fast. When we play with the laser pointer, Molly will chase it for about five minutes and then she's done. She mostly just likes to be included and sit back and watch. There's nothing wrong with that at all, it's just her personality. Molly also loves to cuddle, probably the most out of all of our cats. She cuddles with us every single day on the couch. The minute my husband and I sit on the couch, she jumps on our lap and lays on us and purrs. She just loves to cuddle. And she didn't used to. I remember when she was a kitten, she would just lay by us, but she wouldn't lay on us. Over time, she became a big cuddle bug, though. Whenever I FaceTime my sister, Molly is usually always laying all over me. And my sister always tells me that she's never ever seen a cat be so affectionate. Molly is very much like a dog. She is needy, she needs attention, and that's why in her younger videos she meows at my husband and I. She just loves getting attention. She meows at us every morning to wake us up. She is a very relaxed cat most of the time. She doesn't meow often. She trills more than she meows, and we actually have a video on our channel of her trilling if you want to watch that. Molly also loves food more than Annie and Susie do. She gets really excited every morning when we feed them, much like a dog would. Okay, and then Susie. So Susie is also a very sweet cat. She has a very sweet meow. She is a very personable cat. And when she gives you her attention, there's no one else in the room to her. She loves meeting new people, and whenever someone comes over, Susie is usually the first cat to go up and let them pet her. She loves people. Her personality is the most quirky out of our cats. She likes to make weird sounds. Sometimes she sounds like a human baby. She likes to sit and lay in odd positions. I think her favorite position to lay is on her back with her legs outstretched in the air. Susie has medium energy. She's not as hyper as Annie is, but she's not as calm as Molly is. She's very smart. She's a fast learner, and she was the most agile kitten out of our cats. I remember when we brought her home thinking that she was much more agile and quick than Annie and Molly were when they were kittens. Susie loves to play and carry toys in her mouth. She also likes to hide her favorite toys behind our TV. She likes to cuddle. She likes us both, but she's obsessed with my husband. She hates going outside like Annie. She screams like she's being murdered when we bring her outside. We're still working on getting her used to that, though. Susie doesn't seem as needy as Molly and Annie. Uh, at least to me, she doesn't. Sometimes when we get home, Susie won't acknowledge our presence. She will just keep on sleeping and doing her thing. Annie and Molly usually always greet us by the door, every single time we get home. It could be that Susie is just not used to us yet. She is still only 10 months old. But yeah, they are all equally as loving and affectionate, and they have never hissed at my husband or me, not once. Okay, next question. Are your cats always so funny and loving? All of the cats that I know love to sleep a lot. Yes, our cats are usually funny and loving. In fact, they are actually more funny and loving than what we show you in our videos. This is because we only film a few minutes of our day in our videos, so there's a lot that you guys don't see. We have a lot of fun with our cats, though. 
Okay, next question. How is having three cats different than two? With our cats, it's often that one cat wants to play and party, but the other one could care less. When it's more than two cats, they have a better chance to find someone who's in the mood. Have you guys noticed something like that when Susie came along? Having three cats is actually not that much harder than having two cats. Obviously, there will be more poop and you'll have to buy more food, but it's easier than we thought it would be. Um, cats are a lot easier to care for than dogs. Having three dogs is a lot harder than having three cats. Cats are more independent and they take care of themselves. Our cats take turns playing with each other. Usually Annie and Susie play with each other because they have more energy than Molly does. Molly likes to play for a few minutes and then she's done. Okay, next question. Are your cats like their breed's temperament guidelines described they would naturally be? Um, yes, I would say so. I described their personalities a few minutes ago, um, but all of our cats are very loving and affectionate and friendly, and to me they seem like they fit their breed temperament guidelines. Do your cats ever attack you? If so, then which cat was it? If you mean in a playful way, then yes, they all like to playfully attack us by pouncing on our feet and stuff like that. It doesn't hurt though. Um, if you mean like actually attacking us, then no. Our cats have never bitten us or scratched us intentionally. They are very loving cats because we raised them that way. Does Annie want more petting than Susie and Molly? It's true that Annie loves being pet, but all of our cats love to be pet. I would say Annie loves being pet the most, then Susie, then Molly. Annie would let us pet her all day, but she won't let anyone else touch her unless she gets to know you first. Susie loves to be pet by anyone, including strangers, and Molly loves to be pet on her own terms or when she feels like it. She loves being pet when she cuddles with us on the couch, for example, but she has to come to you first. If you just walk up to Molly and try to pet her, she will usually move out of the way. They all love belly rubs, too. Okay, last question. What does Annie's fur feel like when you touch it? Annie's fur is very soft and it kind of feels silky in a way, um, but it's mostly soft. Her fur feels different than Molly and Susie's fur. Okay, that's all of the questions. It is really hot here where we live. It's like 80 degrees, which is a lot warmer than what it's been. So that's kind of why the cats are tired and also because it's the afternoon and they usually sleep all day. So thank you guys so much for watching and for all of the positive comments you guys leave. We're so lucky to have such awesome subscribers. Have a great rest of your weekend and thank you guys so much for watching.